to do some things together. See, I, I love giving because giving sets us up for favor and blessing to come back. How many of y'all realize that the most successful people on the planet are givers? How many of y'all realize that? Say, oh yeah. Okay, that was weak. And, 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 and that's not the way I roll. If you don't know Del Toro style right now, I will jump in the 17th row and hit you in the forehead with my microphone <laughs> if you don't interact with me. Are y'all feeling what I'm saying? How many of y'all know that giving is a blessing? Yeah. Please, please do me a favor and write this down. Poverty is selfish because when you're broke, the only needs you can focus on are your own. I'm gonna say it again. Text that, tweet that. Come on, somebody. Poverty is selfish because when you're broke, the only needs you can focus on are your own. So my goal this morning is to help you grow in the area of where God wants to take you in terms of your destiny, your dream, your vision, your future, as well as your finances. Is that all right? Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because if I can help you grow in that area, it's easy to give. How many of y'all realize it's easy to give when you got enough? Come on, somebody. It's tough to give when you don't, right? So I'm going to show you some ways that you can grow your income and take it to that next level, but I need you to participate. So, so, so what I love about giving is that giving puts us in a position to receive. Giving puts us in a position to receive. Giving puts us in a position to receive. You just missed it. I said participate, which means when I move, you move. Just like that. Come, let's try it again. Giving, I'm waiting for everybody to do the give. Hands out. Hands out. Puts us in a position to what? The more you the more it puts you in a position to what? Receive. But the more you hold back and say, I got this, it's me and mine, I got it, I don't need, I don't. Are you in a position to get anything back? No. Absolutely not. Here's the truth. The world outside of the church understands the principle of giving. So that's why business people can give and get huge returns without even being in the church and loving God. And they get the result while we're in church bucking and shouting, not giving, come on somebody, and we're struggling. Can I just tell you the truth? Somebody say, oh yeah. oh, yeah. It's time for you to go to the next level. Say, hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, so I need you to participate with a brother. Number three, I need you to embrace the fact that the principles that I'm getting ready to share with you are for you. It's not just for the corporate church. It's for every single one of you all in this room. I believe that over the next few minutes that we have together, God's going to do some crazy crunk stuff in this room. Do you believe that? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm talking about crazy crunk ninja stuff, but in order to do it, <laughs> You have to embrace that it's for you. It's not for your neighbor, it's for you. So I need you to make it personal. Will you make it personal? Yes. Okay, good. If you're willing to make it personal, I guarantee I'll change your life. Number four, I need you to make a decision to pick how you're going to challenge God. In your giving envelope, you're going to see an area where you get to choose what level you want to challenge God on. And I want to give you an example of what I mean by that. I'll never forget the year that my speaking career hit a quarter million dollars for the first time. That year, I set two goals every year. Write this down, y'all. Set financial goals for yourself every year. Set how much money you want to make, but also set how much money you want to give. I've been doing that for over 15 years. God has blessed me exponentially, all right? But watch this. The year that I set the, two, the, the quarter million dollar goal for my business, that same year, I said, if I hit that goal, I'm going to set a higher goal the following year. But I said, Lord, I want to be able to give to my church $25,000, okay? in the tithe, and another 10 in my offering. That was my goal. That was Del Toro's goal. I said, if I hit that goal, I'm going to buy myself a Louis. So I bought myself, a, I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with having nice things. There's just something wrong with nice things having you. You feel it, brother? I just want to use an example. Leave me alone. Don't judge me. My self-esteem will get affected. So hear me out. <laughs> so check this out. So, 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 the, so, so the year that I hit uh, 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 250, I hit it in the business, I sold the tithe, of course, and then I sold the extra 10 in the offering, and, and then I, I went out and bought my bag. Now I've had that bag like six years, six, seven years at this point, and I love it, but I gave myself a reward for achieving a big goal. Does that make sense? And I made sure that God's agenda was on my agenda. Did y'all hear what I just said? I made sure that God's agenda was on what, y'all? My agenda. So my question is, are you making sure that God's agenda is a part of your financial agenda. Make sure that not only through your tithing, but through how you participate in this program, that God's agenda is your agenda. Because the moment you get involved in his agenda, he begins to hook you up with favor, with doors. With how many of y'all know that God can do in one thing what it could take you years and years to try to do? How many of y'all realize that? So, 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 so trust me, hear your boy out. I, I, think, I think stock market, and I think the NASDAQ, and the S&P, I think all that stuff is wonderful. But there is nothing on this planet more powerful than God's economy. And when you jump on board with God's economy, he hooks you up in ways you cannot even possibly dream or, or imagine.
I'm ready to teach. Are you ready to roll? Say, let's do this, Dell. Shout it like a mean it. Say, let's do this, Dell. There's five principles that I want to share with you, and, I'm, and, ooh, and today's message is going to be pretty. I was a good catch. Wasn't it good? <laughs> I was like, dang. There's five principles I'm going to share with you, and they're all part of the Temple Centurion program. But here's what I believe. I believe that the number five is very significant. Five is the number of grace. Five fingers on the hand. The Father told me to tell you this, that the hand of God is extended to your life during this season. Do you receive that? Come on, somebody. As you partner with this program, the hand of God is going to be extended towards your life in this season in a very special way. I don't know about you, but do anything you want to me, God, but don't take your hand off my life. Come on, somebody. Are y'all with me up in here? I can go through any storm as long as I know your hand is on my life. Does that make sense? Anybody ever been in that place where you felt like you couldn't feel God moving in your life anymore? It's a bad place, right? So whatever you do, God, keep your hand on me. Amen? I'm going to teach you five principles that I believe will bless your life profoundly. Are you ready? Say number one. Y'all said that with no energy, no passion. Shout number one. Say launch. Launch. God wants to launch you. God wants to launch you. This is the time, this is the season, this is the moment when God wants to do a new thing in your life and he wants to launch you to a higher place and a higher level in him. How many of y'all realize that God is interested in launching you? Okay, that was horrific. That was like atrocious. Nobody has anything you want to launch? Nobody has a, a vision or a dream or a goal or a plan or, 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 or does anybody have something that, that, I thought I was in a Presbyterian church for a second. I'm going to ask the question again. I thought I was in the baddest church this side of South Florida. Am I at the baddest church or what? Say yes. yes. Who has something in this room? Holler back at your boy. Who got something you trying to launch? Okay, 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 cool, cool. The definition of launch, listen to this, is to set forth, to catapult, or, and here's the part that I love, to release as a self-propelled vehicle or weapon. To release as a self-propelled vehicle or weapon. I need you to understand something powerful. God is trying to launch you in this season, and in this season, he wants you to be self-propelled. Here's what that means. God's not going to do for you what you can do for yourself. It's time for us to stop being lazy, weak Christians. Oh, it's quiet. You don't like this part. Come on, somebody. It's time for you to get in the driver's seat of your life and understand that God is not going to do a lot of the things that you want to happen in your life. He's going to give you the strength and the ability and the know-how, but you're going to have to pull it off yourself. Oh, we don't like that one. Come on, somebody. You, see, you hear how quiet it got? Why? Because we want to give our tithes and offering and sit back and let it be hocus pocus. That's not the way the kingdom works. God puts his super on top of your natural, and you got to get involved in your miracle, involved in your launch, and involved in your breakthrough if it's going to happen. And it ain't going to happen through no hocus pocus, baby. Are you feeling it? Somebody say launch. You're going to have to do, I want you to write this down. I want you to pray as if it all depends on God, and I want you to work like it all depends on you. I want you to pray like it all depends on the Father, but I need you to get working as if it all depends on you. You've got to get in the game because God is trying to launch you. Now, I need you to understand something powerful. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all, and we buck and shout over the exceedingly abundantly above all part, but I'm going to need you to come out of the shout for two seconds and hear me. Now unto him who is able. That doesn't mean he's going to do it. That means he's able to do it. Come on, somebody. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to, which means it's in direct proportion to what? The power that works inside of who, y'all? You. Which means you got to get involved. You got to get moving. You got to make this thing happen. It's time to launch. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder and say, I might not know you, but here's a clue. It's time to launch. Say that. Say that to your neighbor. Say that neighbor. Say it to your neighbor. Say, it's time to launch. It, it, it's time for you to launch. One of the things that keeps us from launching is the fact that I believe that many of us have settled in life. And what I mean by this, that is this. There was a lady, and she was, she was, a, she was a boxer. So one morning, she was jogging, and she sees an old man sitting in a rocking chair, and she sees this old howling dog laying down right next to the man. So she's jogging, and she's hearing the dog bark. She gets close to the house. She goes past the house. Y'all like my barking noise. 
So she runs back to the house. She said, man, why is your dog making all this noise? And he said, well, ma'am, it's simple. It's simple. He's laying down on a nail. And she was like, well, ouch. Why didn't the dumb dog just get up and go lay somewhere else? He stops rocking in his rocking chair, takes a straw out of his mouth and said, well, ma'am, it's obvious that it doesn't hurt him bad enough. And before you laugh too hard, many of us in this room have something in our life that's poking us. You look so cute right now. <laughs> and it hurts you bad enough to complain about it. Come on, somebody. But it doesn't hurt us bad enough to get up and change about it. <laughs> Negative people hurt us bad enough to complain to other friends about it, but it doesn't hurt us bad enough to go into our cell phone and hit delete in that contact record. Massive amounts, of, massive amounts of unsecured credit card debt hurts you bad enough to complain about it, but not cut up the card. You're not in the building. Come on, somebody, talk to me up in here. Are you feeling me? So, so what we've done is we've become comfortable with compromise. And Christ did not pay the price for you to be comfortable. Christ paid the price for you to be extraordinary. Are y'all with me? Come on, somebody. And let me ask you a question. Why would you settle, instead of launching and doing everything that God wants you to do, why would you settle for the nail when Christ already took the nail for you? Get off the nail and let's launch. Are you ready to launch? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Am I talking to 10 of y'all? Just throw your hands way up if, you talk, if I'm talking to you. All right? All right, good, 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 good. So, so I, need, I need you to move into a new place and I need you to get off the nail. One of the things that I love about that word launch is it says something powerful. It says um, to be moved by force. You know, it takes 50% of the shuttle's fuel just to get the shuttle off the ground. So it takes a lot of resources to get something off, to launch something. Does that make sense? So if you're going to launch something, you cannot be committed to the one thing that's going to keep you from launching, which is your comfort zone. See, the one thing that the enemy uses against you all the time is something called your comfort zone. This is your comfort zone right here. This is, and you're like, Odell, what's this? What you got going on here? This is camouflage tape. Can y'all see it? You with me? Holler back at your boy. Let me know you're still with me. All right. So, so, so this is you, but this is all the stuff that you want in life. And the, the challenge is it's hard to get the stuff in life when you stay stuck in your comfort zone. And your comfort zone was set up by fear to keep you safe. So if you're in a place where you're comfortable, you're not being stretched enough, you're not growing enough, and you're not expanding enough, and God will never let you stay satisfied in a place that is comfortable. Does that make sense? Was Calvary comfortable to Christ? No. Come on, somebody. And so if you're going to take it to that next level, you got to be a little bit afraid. you got to be a little bit scared. You gotta, when was the last time you went all in on something? Come on, somebody. Stop playing it safe. Let's go. Let's do this thing. Let's launch. Let's go to the next level. Stop being afraid. Stop sitting back saying, I'm not sure. I need you to go all in or go home. Are y'all with me? You're a part. You're a part. If you're not going to do anything about your dreams, go to a church that has a whack name. Like, we don't do nothing about our success. We expect God to do it all for us international. <laughs> but if you're going to come to Potential Church, come on, somebody. We're here to partner with you to reach your God potential. Amen? Which means it's time to get off the nail and make something happen. I need you to shout back to me. Say, Lord, Lord. say, as I sow, as I sow. Launch, me. launch me. Number two, impact. Say impact. impact. I believe that we're supposed to be the salt of the earth. Does the word say that, yes or no? Yes, it does, okay? Does the word say that we are supposed to let our light so shine before men that they'll see our good work and give him all the credit? Say yes. yes. Which means God is concerned about the impact that you are going to make on this earth. Now, my question to you is this. Are you satisfied with a little picking any little, little house hammer impact? Or are you ready to make the kind of impact that the Father wants you to make? Because I am convinced that we serve an incredible God. Yes or yes? yes. Holler back at your boy Del Toro. Do we serve an incredible God? Yes or yes? yes. We serve a God that came and, 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 and Jesus spent 30 years preparing for three and a half years of sledgehammer. He spent 30 years marinating, come on somebody, for three and a half years of sledgehammer. And God wants me to tell you that it's time for your impact to go to the sledgehammer place. 
Come on, somebody. You ain't loud enough. You're not making enough noise. People don't hear you. Come on, somebody. Whatever you're doing, you need to do it louder. Whatever you're doing, you need to do it bigger. Whatever you're doing, you need to do it grander. Whatever you're doing, you need to do it with a sledgehammer and stop messing around with a little hammer because people can't hear you. You need to make some more noise for the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. For some reason, God sent me here to tell you that you need to be making sledgehammer noise and you ain't making no sledgehammer impact right now. Who am I talking to? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You can produce and fool your friends, but friends don't create growth. Mentors do. Come on, somebody. Friends love you just the way you are. You don't have to change. You don't have to grow. You don't have to evolve. Friends love you just the way you are. Mentors love you too much to leave you the way you are. Come on, somebody. So, 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 so if, 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 if you're going to have the impact, and, and, and uh, uh, the definition of impact is influence. Come on, somebody. If you're going to have the influence in the world, you need to use a sledgehammer. It's time for you to make more noise. It's time for people to hear about your business in a bigger way. Some of y'all are so gifted, talented, and anointed that nobody knows because you ain't making enough noise. Are y'all talking to me up in here? Say, oh yeah. yeah. Open up your mouth and tell. The Bible says in Revelation they were delivered by two things, the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. You got to open up your mouth. You got to make a bigger sound if you're going to really create impact because I believe that God wants to use you to impact this world in a bigger way. Do you believe that? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, it, say it like you mean it. Say Hallelujah. I want you to repeat after me and say, Lord, Lord as, I as I participate, grow my impact. Grow my impact. Grow my impact. That's the prayer that I want you to pray as you sow your temple centurion seed. I want you to pray, God, grow my impact. I want you to pray that prayer. God, launch me and expect him to do it. And if you expect him to do it, some of y'all, some of y'all blow my mind. You give towards causes and you don't expect nothing. And when you don't expect nothing, you don't get nothing. Come on, somebody. You can put a baby up to the nipple of a mother, but if the baby's not hungry and they don't pull, nothing comes out. Come on, somebody. And half of y'all are going up to God empty. I dare you. I double dog dare you. I'll talk. I'll do the. I'll, y'all remember when we used to trash talk at, on, on the corner and we would double, we would do the dozens with each other. We would, everything was cool till you talked about their mama. Y'all remember? That? <laughs> That's the kind of dare. I double dog dare you to put God to the test and watch what he does in your life. Number three. Somebody say number three. three. Elevate. God is ready to elevate you to another place. How many of y'all believe that? Shout hallelujah. God is ready to elevate you to another place, and it says to raise to a higher place, rank, or status. Here's what I believe. I I need you to repeat after me. My current level level is the enemy enemy. to my next level. If you are pleased and satisfied with your current level, it's the enemy to your next level. You've got to be willing to leave the good to go for the great. Write that down. You have to be willing to leave the good to go for the great. Oftentimes, God will challenge you to leave what you know, to leave what's comfortable, Abraham, to go to a place I will show you later. Come on, somebody. Amen? And you have to be okay with the fact that God is elevating you to a place in order to do that. Now, there's a couple of things that I need you to understand. Everybody take your hand and put it out real big like this. Everybody put your hand out in front of you real big. I need you to understand something that's powerful. It's spiritual because the Bible says like attracts like, but it's also very financial and it's very, very proven with stati- statistics and data and research. There, the, the truth is this. You will become the average of the five closest people to you. You are the palm of your hand. The five closest people to your life are your fingers. You become who you hang around. Put your hand back down. If you want God to elevate you, you got to change your five. In this season, as you sow towards this offering, I want you to say, God, change my five. Come on, somebody. Change my five. Change. I'm tired of these knucklehead folks. I'm tired of these folks. I'm tired of social networking with people who ain't paying me. Come on, somebody. I'm tired of wasting my time with people who ain't going nowhere. I'm tired of having the same knucklehead conversation with folks who aren't growing and developing. Come on, somebody. 
Oh, you got you mad on that one. You mad on that one. But it, it, it's time to elevate and take some things to that next level. It reminds me of this of this little boy who was watching a man fish. I got to tell a story. Will y'all help me tell the story? Potential. Yes. That was that was horrific. Will you help me tell the story? Yes. Okay, cool. There was a little boy and, and 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 he was he was on the shore and he saw this old man and he was the old man was fishing in the lake. Now this old man was fishing and he was catching big fish and little fish and big fish and little fish and big fish and and big fish and. Very good. And every time he would catch a big fish, he would throw the big fish back. And every time he caught that little fish, he would put that little fish on ice in his cooler. So this man was catching big fish and little fish and big fish and little fish. Big fish and? Every time he caught a big fish, he would throw the big fish. Every time he caught that little fish, he put that little fish on ice in his? You guys are telling a great story. Wow, you're doing a great job. So this man did this for about three hours, and all of a sudden the storms came, so the guy brings the boat back in. He begins to start walking home. The little man, the little boy is amazed. He runs up to the old man. He says, sir, hold on, hold on. You can't go home. What, what, what's going on here? He was like, I've been watching you for three hours, and you were catching big fish and? Big fish and? Every time you caught a big fish, you would throw the big fish. Every time you caught that little fish, you put that little fish on ice in your... And I don't understand why you were doing that. Dang, y'all are telling a good story. Anyway, so he was like... Why were you doing that? Why every time you caught the big fish, you threw it back? And the dude said, well, man, I hate the fact that I had to throw back that big fish. But you see, back at home, I only have a little itty bitty frying pan. I need, I need, I need, I need you to write something down for me. God cannot elevate you as long as you're willing to argue for your limitations. See, when you argue for your limitations, you get to keep them. See, what happens is, y'all, God is trying to do a big thing in your life, but as long as you're willing to settle for little fish, come on, somebody, little people, little networks, come on, somebody, little connections, God can't hook you up like he's trying to hook you up because you're settling for stuff that's inside your what, y'all? It's inside your what? It's inside your what? Comfort zone, CZ. Wow, that sounds like another abbreviation for a piece of jewelry that tries to act like it's a real diamond. But it's not a real diamond. It's cubic zirconium. Come on, somebody. And your comfort zone ain't real, just like cubic zirconia ain't real. And you can't fake it till you make it. You have to face it until you make it and believe in the real thing and believe in Christ and believe in who God says you are and not your pickaninny, stupid knucklehead comfort zone. Are we friends? Come on, somebody. So, so here's my thought. If, if at the end of the day, you're settling for this when God is trying to give you this, God's trying to elevate you. Come on, somebody. I, and I need you to stop looking at your bank account, stop looking at your neighborhood, stop looking up how, at how many people in your family graduated before you, stop looking at all this stuff that you use, your ethnicity, your race, your background, your culture, your creed, your single parenthood, every other excuse that you use to argue for this small pan and say that I serve a big, awesome God. Come on, somebody. And all I need, come on, somebody, all I need is some aluminum foil. Can I get somebody up in the house? Come on. Some ceramic! Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Why are y'all laughing at me? And, and God can do with one big thing what it would take you a hundred of them little minnows to do. He's trying to elevate you. Come on, somebody. Say, Father. Father. Shout it. Say, Father. Father. In this season. As I so, elevate me in Jesus' name. Put your hands together for that. Isn't that awesome, y'all? Next one is real simple. Innovate. 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 Say innovate. That's number four. Innovate. This is real simple. This one will go pretty fast. How many of y'all remember, remember, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Gen X cat. I was raised on boys to men. Y'all feel what I'm saying? End of the road. People say I look like them, I sang like them, I had two singing groups, me and three white dudes, me and three black dudes. I thought one of the cultural groups would make it. Anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, um, y'all remember back in the day how we used to have the little cassette tapes and, and, and you put, and you had one artist and, and, and all the songs were good? Y'all remember back then? It ain't like that no more, right? And, you, and, and so what you, when you carried your music around, you had a set of headphones and you had one artist and, and all the songs were good. 
and, 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 and then that was great. But then they decided to not be creative. They decided to innovate and come up with the iPod. And now you can have thousands of artists, thousands of songs, and it's smaller, thinner, more portable. What I'm trying to tell you is that creativity does not take you from the Walkman to the iPod. Innovation does that. And the Father is trying to do something innovative with you, in you, and through you. Is there an area, innovate means to make something new or to create something from nothing. Let me ask you a question. Is there areas in your life right now that you need God to innovate? To take an old school thing and do something new with it? Is anybody in the building? Come on, talk to me. Can you think of something that God needs to do a new thing in? The Bible says, any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, she is a new creature. Old things have passed away and behold, all things become what, y'all? New. In what area of your life do you need God to innovate and do a new thing? Say, Father, as I participate, innovate in me. The Bible promises you in Proverbs that he'll give you witty inventions and creative ideas. Believe God for one idea that can make your entire financial future turn around. Does that make sense? He can do it for you. I've seen him do it over and over in my life. I'd like to challenge you with principle number five, accelerate. Say accelerate. I love this one. One of the things that God wants to do is speed things up. The Bible says in Joel that he will redeem the time and restore the years that the locusts and the canker worm ate up. How many of you all realize that, that, that you've lost some stuff over the last couple years and you need God to speed up the recovery of what you've lost? Can we just be transparent, take off our nice suits and our gated communities and our nice cars and be honest that we've lost a lot of stuff the last three to five years and it will be a blessing if God could accelerate getting those things back? Somebody shout hallelujah. Absolutely. But in order for God to give us back what we need, we have to do our part. And I'm gonna need my team to come out and help me with this last part. Because the truth is, we ask God to release the flow from heaven. And then we wonder why over here we don't get what we need. And there's a reason why we cannot accelerate, because the word accelerate means to speed up the velocity of something. Okay? And so what happens oftentimes is we ask God, we pray, we say, we say, do on earth as it is in heaven and give us this day our daily bread and release the flow from heaven. And, and we pray all these prayers, asking God to release the flow. And he released the flow a long time ago. But the problem is we're over here expecting to get it out and it's not coming out on this end. How many of y'all have ever given and sown and you've done all the stuff and you're trying to get the, and you're like, and there's nothing there. Anybody in the building? Come on, somebody. Anybody ever question God about where the results are of your faith? Come on, guys, be naked and be transparent with Del Toro for one second. Anybody other than me question God about where the results are? I'm going to show you something that's going to change your life if you'll let me. The problem is, y'all, the Bible says that the power of death and life is in the power of our tongue. And what we articulate has a direct proportion to what we accelerate. So every time you say, I don't have enough money, you're tying a knot in the line. Come on, somebody. It's quiet in the building. Y'all better talk to me. Every, every time you say, there's not enough good jobs out there, you're tying a knot in the line. Come on, somebody. E every time you say, no, no they, they are not going to love me again because I've been through a divorce. Come on, somebody. You're tying a knot in the line. And it's preventing what he's already released. Did y'all hear what I just said to you? He already released it but it can't get to you on this side. So here's my thought. Here, here, here's Del Toro's thought. Every time, come on somebody, I need somebody with a Holy Ghost imagination to talk back to Del Toro right now. Every single time you experience and you see that there is a knot in the line of your face, I need you to use the knots in the scripture, come on somebody, to untie the knots in your life. Come on somebody. And you need to go up to that first lie that the enemy tried to tell you, and you need to say, God is not a man, come on somebody, that he should lie, the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, come on somebody, surely he will bring it to pass. And you need to untie that knot. 
You need to come up to the second now. And when people try to tell you your dream can't happen, your goals can't happen, you always gonna be broke, you always gonna have money problems, I need you to look at that now and I need you to say, I've been young and I've been old, but I have not ever seen, come on somebody, the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. Come on somebody. And when you get to that third knot and the enemy tries to tell you that your vision can't come to pass and you can't make it and you're never going to be great, I need you to say, guess what, y'all? I need you to look at that knot with an attitude and I need you to say this in your mind. Eyes have not seen. Come on, somebody. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of man the things that God has in store for them that love him. And when you use the knots in the scripture to untie the knots in your line, you will release the flow and it will accelerate into your life, into your finances, into your family, into your dream, into your vision, into your business. Am I talking to anybody? Shout hallelujah. I want to close with this. So oftentimes we struggle with giving because we don't understand our value. And I talk about this quite a bit in this program, and it'll really bless your life, the thriving program. But I have something up here that I'd like to ask you about. Who knows what this is? $100 bill, right? Does this $100 bill have good value? Could it spin well? Say, oh yeah. Anybody want this $100 bill? Okay, we all want the $100 bill. Don't run up here, don't run up here. Don't run up here. Do not run up here. Do not come up here. Okay. I'm going somewhere. Watch me. This $100 bill has tremendous value. I don't care how much money you make. I make incredible money, but guess what? I still love a $100 bill all day long. Y'all feel me? Somebody say, oh yeah. What? $100 bill, I'll take waffles. Run. I'm sorry, I had a moment. I had a money. Check this out. I love this $100 bill. I think it's great. But let me ask you a question. You all said you wanted it, but what if I fold it a couple times and throw it away. Who still wants the hundred? Okay. What if I were to throw it on the ground and step on it? Talk about it, how bad it looks and all that stuff. Who still wants it? Um, what if I crinkle it up? And what if I look at it and say, you ain't nothing but a hundred. You ain't no thousand. Right? And I start assaulting, I start assaulting its self-esteem. Who still wants it? What, what if I was to even tear it in half? and then tape it back together. Come on, somebody. Who still wants it? What's my point? My point is simply this. There is very little you can do to this $100 bill that will change its value. Its value doesn't change because of what it goes through. Come on, somebody. This is worth, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. This $100 bill is worth $100 whether it's in a Louis wallet. Come on, somebody or in a Kmart special wallet. It does not matter. It doesn't matter. So, so Del, what are you trying to say? It don't matter if you used to live in a 5,000 square foot palatial mansion and now you got a little, little studio, 700 square foot whatever in the corner. Come on, somebody. Your value does not change in the eyes of God. You are still worth Calvary to Christ. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? You are still worth Calvary to Christ. Amen? And when you know your value, you don't let nobody diminish your value. You don't let nobody say nothing to you that changes your value. You don't, you don't, you don't let no job loss or job transition or relationship, or you don't let none of that change the value of who you know you are in Him. Come on, somebody. What? My word says that you're the head and not the tail. Come on, somebody. My word says you're above and not beneath. My word says that the last shall be what? First. Come on, somebody. My word says that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Be confident in who you are and who Christ called you to be. Everybody on your feet. I want to pray a simple prayer over your life. Have y'all enjoyed the last couple minutes we've had together? I want to pray a simple prayer over your life. I'm going to ask that you reach both arms up and receive this download. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. 
I thank you, God, for their goals, their hopes, their dreams, their visions, their aspirations, their potential. I pray right now in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ that as they partner with this amazing ministry and this Temple Centurion program, God, that you would open up the floodgates of heaven over their life. God, I pray that you would accelerate them as never before. God, I pray that you would innovate in their lives. I pray, God, that you would elevate them to a new dimension in you. I, God, I pray that, that you would let them have an incredible impact like they've never had before. And I pray that you would launch every dream and vision and aspiration that they have as they partner with you, God. God, I ask that you would literally make their wildest dreams come true before their very eyes. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we proudly fund the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You receive it. You receive it.